it is time to leave your worries outside and laugh with us inside the treehouse. I'm Dan O'Malley, along with Trey Trenholm. Raj Sharma is uh, doing gigs in Reno this this fine day or yesterday or I don't know. He's flying back at some point. And apparently it was uh, an eventful weekend because Trey, not only did uh, I think Raj have a good time in Reno, but you went to what you referred to as MILF Fest over the weekend. And um, I have to say I'm a little intrigued by that because you don't strike me as a festival guy. Well, it, it was uh, it was actually a, a a fundraiser for cancer research. Uh, I, I actually, not cancer research. It's for uh, to help people uh, who are going through cancer treatments and their families uh, with housing, food, uh, travel expenses, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, great cause, great event. Um, uh, Parliament, the bar I, I run, uh, we did the cocktails for this function, and uh, so it, it was a. Uh, an event where uh, everyone was dressed very nicely and um, mm-hmm. uh, the booze was flowing freely. And um, there were there newly w- single women um, for you know, very uh, sad reasons. <laughs> you know, uh, unfortunately, there, there were a lot of attached women, uh, but a lot of uh, very, very uh, hot women and, mm-hmm. you know, all dressed up. And uh but and it was a wide spectrum spectrum from you know I would say uh, mid twenties to uh, your uh, you know cougar, <laughs> rare, yeah. So unfortunately, you were only able to see the goings on. You weren't necessarily uh, invited on stage to participate, like an assistant in a magic show. <sighs> no, no, I, I I was not. We in fact we were. Uh... <laughs> We were so busy. I mean, I'll put it to you this way. I, I was making drinks six at a time, and I could hardly keep up. Wow. And I was just one of five stations of five different cocktails that we had. And we were just, for a good two, two and a half hours, just, I mean, we, we ran out of booze. And we, we brought a lot of booze. A wow. lot. Now, we didn't run out to the very end. So, yeah, actually, we we planned it very well, but, um, you know, just, we had one special, uh, like the drink I was serving, we had a a special, uh, ice spear for it. Uh, and we, we had 400 of them and we ran out an ice spear. Yeah. Like long, uh, you know, like you would see in a Collins glass type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, fancy. Gotcha. You know, and we had, we so, had ice, ice spheres, little, you know, circles for the old fashions and stuff like that. And then you ran out of booze at the cancer fundraiser. I, at the very end. Uh, not all. Not, I, I ran out of what I was serving, but. Uh, but. Well, that's good. It sounds to me then that you put the fun in fundraiser. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was uh, the funniest part. I, I didn't get a chance to introduce myself. But uh, Hannah Bata was the uh, MC. Oh, from uh, Fox 4 in Dallas. Yes. From, from the 10 on Fox 4 with our buddy Steve Noviello. Yes. And uh, so um, the event was called Bubbly Q. Um, and uh, so we had bubble guns uh, at our, which we have at Parliament. And people absolutely just love. Um, and all it is is just one of those, you know, Basically, things you stick in bubble solution and you put them up and they blow bubbles everywhere. Mm-hmm. And but toward the end, uh, we had started sending some stuff back to the bar and uh, we we sent the bubble guns back. And Hannah was just devastated that we she wanted to come take a picture with bubbles and we didn't have the bubbles anymore. And she she was quite a uh, quite upset about it. Like, she really? doesn't strike me as she does not strike me as someone. That often doesn't get what she wants. Well, you know, when you are uh, that hot, you you that you you don't get. Yeah, there's very few times you don't get what you want. I'm surprised you didn't find a way to get that woman some bubbles. And at that point in the night, 
this this is towards the way way end of the night if, uh i mean we started prepping and everything at noon and now we're, we're talking about uh about 10 10 15 at night uh and we still have a lot more work to do and packing everything up and getting it back so yeah no uh-huh. well yeah, i think really- there's an op- there, there there's an opportunity here i think we can you know because we have an in at uh, at fox four i think we can you know get her some bubbles if if she wants them that bad sure absolutely that's they're they're easy to get i'm more than happy to to shower her with bubbles if, if she so desires okay slow your roll there there uh, <laughs> uh casanova i don't think she's in to necessarily want to take a shower with you just yet I, although, I, I, although i admire the shot yeah <laughs> But no, so anyways, very fun event. Um, and and uh, so did you get a date out of it? Not with Hannah, obviously. No. Uh, she has she's higher standards, and she's married. But yes, um, yeah, she had she had she has quite the rock on her finger. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you were gonna say that was about her husband, but whatever. But no, uh, no, no date. I, I I didn't have time. I I, I literally hardly had time. Uh, I mean, it, it was a crappy thing. Like we were so busy Th- there are the food stations were all these unbelievable restaurants and we, we hardly even had time to get any food. Uh, it was just, uh, and, and that's what you want in these charity events. You want the booze to flow and people get yeah. drunk and spend more money. And, and that's exactly right. Any idea we, how much money was raised? I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I know we did our part. <laughs> well, if you ran out of booze, I'm going to guess you, you you had to have hit seven figures, like at least a million dollars raised. If you know, if you, I doubt TV it was that much, but, but uh, it, it was, it was. I think it was a good event. I feel badly for you, Trey, because while being in charge of the booze at the uh, cancer fundraiser, of which you did a phenomenal job. I know ultimately it would have been awesome if you could have left with a uh, philanthropic lady, yeah, or at least at least a phone number. Um, and the reason I feel badly for you is because you've been sober now for over eight years, and the one segment of the female population where you would be seen as a god is as a bartender. And that means she has to be a drinker. And that just, I just don't think that those two worlds should collide. <laughs> you know, that, that probably, uh, explains some of my, my dating problems in sobriety is I, I have, I have yet to date another sober person. Um, and that's actually, a, you know, and I actually don't care if people drinks, but you know, like my last relationship, uh, you know, she decided to drink more when, once we started dating. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> ah, come on. Let's be honest. I don't think that was all her fault. I, you know, on this one, uh, you're right. It, it wasn't all her fault. Uh, COVID happened. Um, oh, okay, it, yeah. But, uh, but you know, yeah. Even as, yeah, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, this time <laughs> it's actually it's funny. Someone tried was like, "Hey, I got this person I'd love to set you up with." And uh, but uh, she's a great girl, loves to cook. She just yeah you know, likes to sit at home and 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 drink. And I'm like, yeah. I, I said. I appreciate it, but for once, I'm going to make a healthy choice and go. No, not for me, because right, that has not worked out with me for me so far. Uh, Watching, you know, having having an argument with someone, knowing now sometimes it's fun because you know they're not going to remember it the next day, so you you can get away of saying things. But uh, oh yeah, you say whatever you want. But then then it also when you have meaningful conversations and you also go, yeah, they're not going to remember it uh, next day. Then it's just your your living Groundhog Day, and it's not near as entertaining. Yeah, but then you can make some stuff up, like like baby, you you were you were just horrible last night. You said some things, you did some things. I mean, you you, you called me names, and she didn't have to have done any of this stuff because she's not gonna remember. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, the problem one, is they, they they usually did. They did what? Yeah, said horrible things and called me names. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I was gonna add on to that that. Uh, <laughs> Like maybe they were crawling around on the ceiling or something, and and God, I hope that wasn't happening too. No, no, drunk people just can't defy gravity. Drink. Yeah, <laughs> just just ugly. Yeah. Well, I tell you, what, we'll find a way to make your uh, to make your week better. You didn't get any phone numbers this weekend, but I'll see if we can make it a good week for you inside the treehouse. How about that? Sweet. You're in the treehouse. Visit us online.
online at treehouseonair.com. All right, let's get you into a new vehicle. Look, I know it can be intimidating when it comes time to get a new vehicle, but you can actually make the process enjoyable. You can make it fun. Go to Fairlease, fairlease.org. Not only can they save you a bunch of money when you lease versus buy, but they can also save you a bunch of time. You're not spending hours or days at a dealership. Instead, Fairlease is going to cater to you, the customer. Everything is about you. They'll bring you the vehicle that you want. You can sign all the paperwork and everything uh, remotely, never having to waste a minute of your precious time. And you can get the car you want. Whatever the car is that you want, if they don't have it currently in their stock, in their inventory, they will go get it for you and then bring it to you wherever you want. Again, it's all about you, the customer, when you use Fair Lease that uh, you hear about, obviously, right here inside the treehouse. So go to their website, get a hold of them and say, hey, Dan and Trey from the treehouse said to give you guys a shout about getting my new vehicle. So do that right now. Go to fairlease.org. Once again, that is fairlease.org and start leasing the no hassle way with Fair Lease. You're in the treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. That first segment of the treehouse is brought to you by Fair Lease. Save time and money on your next new vehicle when you lease it from Fair Lease. Leasing the no hassle way from Fair Lease. Go to their website, fairlease.org. That's fairlease.org. And if you give them a call, make sure you tell them that you heard about them right here inside the treehouse. Are you flying the infested skies? Oh, no. I know. I just saw your eyebrow tray pop up like Spock um, on a game show. And it really is a troubling question to ask because anytime there are creepy crawlies on a plane, it always uh, evokes fear and Samuel Jackson references. Thanks to uh, snakes on a plane. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Trey. Oh, I, I, I saw a video and I, I never got saw the outcome context of where it was, what was happening, but someone on airline looked up and like, there was all of a sudden an animal in the light. I was like, no, no, thank you. I but, saw that video. I saw that video and I believe that to be a bat. I say that because I have some experience with bats because, uh, uh, at one point where my wife and I were living, uh, earlier this year, uh, we were living in a space that had some bats, not in necessarily the bedroom with us at all times, just a couple of times. Um, and then, uh, but that's because, uh, there was a whole bat harem living in the walls of that particular house. The, um, that was a big bat then when I saw like, Oh, the, well, the one you saw in the light of a plane. Mm -hmm. It might've been a big bat. I don't know. The bats that, that I lived with for a short period were little itty bitty bats, which I was fine with, which they don't seem so little when they're flapping around on your chest, the way uh, <laughs> the one did when I was trying to get rid of it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Still, I the, when I saw the little feet on the light that you're talking about, and they looked like little bat feet. They did. But I'm also wondering, could it have been something else? Like, um, could it have been a rat? I say that because, to no one's surprise anywhere, Spirit Airlines may <laughs> have had an issue with a rat on board. But not just any rat. A super rat was spotted on a Spirit Airlines flight inside of a light fixture. So I think this is what you're talking about, Trey. Instead of what I thought to be a bat or you thought was, I don't know what you thought it was, but it it looks like it was a rat. My first thought when I saw it was opossum, so yes, but then, then it's a that's a very big rat. Nearly every airline requires animals to be confined inside a carrier when they fly. However, passengers on a Spirit Airlines flight last week were startled to see a rodent scurrying above them inside a cabin light fixture. It's not clear how the super rat got on board, but the unusual passenger had far more leg room than anyone else. <laughs> the incident, <laughs> which is saying something because Spirit charges for that. I know because I fly Spirit sometimes. Uh, the incident raised a lot of questions, including if the rodent was even a rat to begin with. So now not only are some calling it a super rat, but some are wondering 
if it was even a rat, Trey, like you're saying to you, it looked more like a possum, which I don't, I don't want to fly the infested skies. I don't care what rodent it is. I don't want it in the plane because I know what rodents do. They eat. And I don't want any wires or anything being eaten when I'm flying on a plane. You know, and, and that makes perfect sense. Um, and they, they escape things, which means all of a sudden you could be flying the friendly skies and then have a uh, rodent just drop on your head. <laughs> I asked for nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A video recorded by a passenger on a spirit flight from DFW to LAX went viral on Instagram. The footage shows the creature moving around with its claws visible against the light covers. One passenger called it a super rat, although some commenters speculated that, that it could be a raccoon. Oh, goody. Where's Sam Jackson when you need him with that? Yeah, line? really? <laughs> um. Living in New York, uh, one person said, I'm far too familiar with rats, and I've seen a few large enough to confuse them with cats. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, to be to be fair, Spirit Airlines has been struggling financially since its merger with JetBlue was shot down by the courts earlier this year. I, I, uh, I don't agree with that sentence in the article that says, to be fair, Spirit, Spirit Airlines has been struggling financially. That's not fair. It's not fair. It's not okay to give Spirit Airlines an excuse for having rodents in the aircraft just because they're struggling financially. We're talking about being able to do the bare minimum as an airline, which is really how Spirit has operated its entire time, which is we're only agreeing to get you there. We're not saying you're going to be comfortable. Yeah, but it does. It, it, it begs a couple other questions, which are number one. Um, how did the rodent get in there? Because because the one thing you really would like for your airplane to be is is airtight. <laughs> in a perfect world, sure. You know, it's... But I've I've seen enough uh, I've I've seen enough you know disaster films and uh, action films on planes to know that you can get access to the cabin as long as you climb up through the landing gear. Okay, yeah, and then the other thing that is is troublesome is. Very seldom are rodents by themselves. Yeah, they usually bring the whole gang. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know any raccoons that fly solo. Um, <laughs> they like the buddy system. They do. They're very much a part of the buddy system. And then that buddy's got a buddy and that buddy's got a buddy. It's basically a raccoon pyramid scheme. And you've got the entire downline on your flight. Um so, yeah, I'm kind of with you there. And especially when you think when the pilot who's supposed to do the the pilot still do the walk around inspection. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to. I, 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 I can't remember the last time I saw one doing it. I, you know, I think now you, you board the way they board you so fast, you, you don't have time. But, yeah, they're, they're every pilot is supposed to do a walk around inspection. God, I hope they do. I don't know if they're still doing that. Um, and if we, if we're in the mood to be offering Spirit Airlines excuses for, uh, you know, having rodent infestations on its aircraft, at least if the pilot's walking around, it should be able to spot something. Unless, of course, it's a raccoon and they wear masks and you can't see them. I mean. <laughs> Shh, nobody move nobody move he won't notice you i got that i i hope pilots still do the walk around because you know i want someone inspecting the plane that has some skin in the game <laughs> I, I i do too i want someone that wants to be there yeah. the problem is i think the last time i saw i think the last time i saw a pilot outside of a spirit airplane it's because he was leaving <laughs> you're listening to the treehouse visit us online at treehouseonair.com yeah you fly it yourself yeah <laughs> i'm not getting on that thing <laughs> <laughs> there's raccoons <laughs> If you thought 2024 couldn't get any scarier, you were wrong. 
back for its 36th year. Hangman's House of Horrors is the best haunted house experience in DFW. Hangman's House of Horrors isn't just an award-winning haunted house. They have something for everyone, including an interactive art exhibit called The Beauty of Horror that would make even Vincent Van Gogh cry and cut his other ear off. And you can test your zombie apocalypse skills in their Outbreak exhibit. Hangman's House of Horrors is located at 4400 Blue Mound Road in Fort Worth and is open every weekend through November 2nd. For more information and to buy tickets starting at just $39, visit hangmans.com. That's hangmans.com. Do it. You're listening to The Treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. If you would like even more Treehouse in your life, you can do that. Go to patreon.com slash Treehouse on air. You can subscribe to our Patreon channel. That's patreon.com slash treehouse on air. We've got three different subscription levels that you can subscribe to to get even more treehouse in your life. So if you want more treehouse, just go to patreon.com slash treehouse on air. All right. We have uh, more big, exciting goings on inside the treehouse right now, including. Hanging out doesn't sound like fun at Fiesta Texas lately. <laughs> and I mean that quite literally uh, because several roller coaster riders were left stuck in the air at Six Flags Fiesta Texas on Saturday, October 19th. That's according to locals who attended the amusement park. TikToker named Nick posted a viral video showing park riders frozen while on the Iron Rattler, calling it his worst nightmare. It's always funny to uh, say that that right there is my worst nightmare when you're not actually on it. You're just really glad you're not, but you're just recording other people's worst nightmares and saying that's my worst nightmare. I think their worst nightmare is being stuck on the ride with you recording it, saying it's your worst nightmare, even though they're the ones actually living it. But whatever. Uh, so thank you, Nick. Uh, meanwhile, TikToker April Joel said in their video that it felt like the park was over capacity due to Fright Fest, a Halloween event that runs from September 7th to November 3rd at Six Flags theme parks. It features haunted houses, scare zones, and live entertainment. Uh, sometimes the live entertainment is also a scare zone. The amount of people at Fright Fest was crazy, as well as all the road roller coasters getting stuck. That's according to another TikToker. Uh, Jessica on TikTok also shared she would never Go to Six Flags again due to 80% of the rides being closed. She said people were stuck on Batman and the Iron Rattler. She said everything was malfunctioning. I was so upset. Six Flags Fiesta Texas, though, responded to the claims and told My San Antonio, the company's rides are programmed with sensitive alerts that, if triggered, will stop the ride in a position that is safe for riders. Um, they went on to say that when this happens, riders are informed. <laughs> Hey, you're stuck. <laughs> hey, guess what? Uh -huh. <laughs> I hope you don't have to go potty. Uh, uh, they said, when this happens, riders are informed. The ride and control systems are inspected, and typically the ride will be returned to the station, typically. Uh, when this occurred on Saturday, the rides were evaluated, cleared to reopen, and operated smoothly for the rest of the week. And again, that's according to uh, uh, Six Flags Fiesta Texas. I can easily say I, I'd agree with Nick. That's one of my worst nightmares is, is being stuck on a roller coaster. That actually happened to me once at Six Flags Over Texas in Arlington, except it was on one of the lamest rides that could possibly happen, but it was still scary at the time. Remember the bobsled? I don't yeah. even know if it's still there. If it is, it's like a kid's ride probably nowadays. But I remember going on the bobsled and that first uphill incline, you know, like on most roller coasters where it goes mm -hmm. tick, 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 tick before the drop off. Uh, that's where we got stuck. We got stuck before you actually go over the hump. So we were just kind of in an up incline position. Not terrible. When you compare it to other bigger rides, you know, like the Titan or, you know, uh, the Texas Giant or real rides. The bobsled's not exactly the scariest of rides to be stuck on. But when you're stuck up there for about 40, 45 minutes like I was, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, the thing about old Six Flags, that it, I believe at one point, 
I think it was called Judge Roy Scream. Yep. And it was the largest wooden roller coaster in the country, which fun as a kid, but man, you look back and going, wow, steel probably would have been a better choice. <laughs> yeah. That's like, and it's amazing to think that at one point the Judge Roy Scream was ever considered the biggest anything other than disappointment when you compare it to other oh, yeah. roller coasters. Because when you see that thing, it's supposed to be, at the time they built it, it was right there at the side of the road. So it's one of the attractions when you drive by. Ooh, look at this roller coaster. But then once the rides got bigger and faster, you drive past the Judge Roy Scream and you're like, that's that's more of like, that's not even heavy breathing. It's just, it's just Roy. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, like a then, starter I mean, coaster old school you had that but then you know also right on 30 you had the shockwave which was the loop-de-loop -loop, yeah and that always looked far more intimidating yeah i've been in ball pits that were scarier than the judge roy scream <laughs> why were they that scary <laughs> i have a, a, a unhealthy fear of drowning even in plastic balls okay <laughs> It's not as easy to stand up in a ball pit to keep from drowning as it is in a river. At least the rivers I've been in. That's just of all the things you could have chosen that were scarier, a ball pit. That was very intentional. <laughs> Look, you can have all the rational fears you want, Trey, but for me, the majority of my fears are completely irrational. But while we're on the subject, when was the last time you, you tried standing up in a ball pit? Then you don't know. <laughs> I mean, you does Chuck know. E. Cheese just give you nightmares? Yeah, but that's for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. It makes me real nervous when I see Chuck E. Cheese running around a spirit airline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're in the treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. Just like Aaron said, check out treehouseonair.com. That is the website for all things treehouse. Also, check out our YouTube channel. Fun stuff happening on our YouTube channel. It is Treehouse On Air. Or just search for the Treehouse Podcast on YouTube. YouTube.com slash at Treehouse on air and when you go there you might be able to check out something called treehouse tv where we will be doing the following segment it is time once again trey inside the treehouse that we play verses but not just any verses but instead the spooky halloween edition that we've been doing since last week and we will continue to do through halloween one because it's an easy segment for us to do and two it's fun to play would you rather with some of the scariest movie icon villains of all time are you ready for yes. spooky verses this week inside the terrifying treehouse darkly lit stairwell you find yourself you are on the middle landing and in front of you hang on i gotta see who's upstairs in front of you Upstairs, in your path to freedom, is Jigsaw. So my question for you would be, with Jigsaw on the upstairs... Congratulations, you are still alive. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive. But not you. Not anymore. Would you want to go up the stairs in search of freedom and escape through Jigsaw? Or would you want to go downstairs to try your luck at besting Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs? Good evening, Clarice. <laughs> By the way, for the sake of this bit, you are now Clarice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I put it to you again. Would you rather 
in spooky versus inside the treehouse tray. You find yourself in a darkly lit stairwell. Would you rather go upstairs to try to go through Jigsaw to escape, or are you going to try to go downstairs through Hannibal Lecter? Oh. Um, Talk it out. Let us hear your thoughts. Uh, Jigsaw is just a creepy uh, AF. And, um, you know, <clears throat> Hannibal Lecter is at least just human. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to well, go, see, I'm going to try to go through Hannibal. Interesting. See, th this is why I'm trying to pair these iconic, uh, Halloween villains appropriately because Jigsaw, while you had like Jigsaw, the little puppet on the tricycle, which is the visual representation I'm showing you in the darkly lit stairs so you've got jigsaw's puppet going down the stairs on the tricycle right and jigsaw himself was human it was just a guy a really you know effed up guy but still a guy his name is kramer <laughs> interestingly that was his last name um but then also human is hannibal lecter so i got human on human but they're both really terrifying once they get their hands on you right both of which have to have the element of surprise when you're on this stairwell, neither one of them necessarily has the element of surprise unless you just turn on the lights and you just go, holy, uh, look at Hannibal Lecter and Jigsaw. The other thing is, in, in full disclosure, I, I never saw the Jigsaw movie. Wow. I'm going to give you the first one in a very uh, brief nutshell, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, two people wake up in a completely secluded uh, room, locked in a room, chained up, dead body in the middle of the floor, and the two of them are chained up, right? And they have to figure out how to get out. And the only way to get out is there's a hacksaw in the middle of the floor. So that's basically the premise of it. All the Jigsaw movies basically rest upon the premise of he's going to put you in a horrible situation and you have to decide what you want to do. Okay. So in the case of the first Saw movie, this guy had the option to saw his own leg off because he was in irons, saw his own uh, uh, foot off, and then take the key to escape and leave the other guy there to die. That's basically what it was. And you keep in mind, it's probably been 20 years since I've seen it, but that's basically it. And then obviously, you know, Hannibal Lecter would like to eat you with a nice Chianti. Yeah. So uh, Jigsaw presents an ethical conundrum. A very violent and horrific one. Yes. Okay. So you're still uh, going to try to go through a Hannibal Lecter? Yeah. Yeah. I'm still, uh, you know, at, at least with you, especially in, in that uh, I've still got the advantage of height uh, going you're sticking downstairs with the, again. You're sticking with your high ground theory. Uh, well, that, you know, there's something to be said for it. At, uh, and, you know, Hannibal's slightly older than I am, so maybe I can still outrun the old man. Okay, that's interesting. So you brought up one of the reasons why I am not going to go against Hannibal Lecter. One, because he's older, which means he's got old man strength, and you and I both know that's a real thing. And we saw what he could do with old man strength when he uh, took out those two guards in the film, but then wore that one and wore that one dude's face. Okay, hey, Dan, 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 I'm, I'm gonna give you a real eye opener here. Mm. Uh, uh, Hannibal Lecter in the movie is our age you know he's not <laughs> yeah yeah he is get the out of here no way yeah. we're, we're now the ones who have old man strength <laughs> wait does that mean that he has ultra old man strength because he's older or is he just like nursing home strength which means feeble um i mean he has psychotic old man strength I say, I don't want to mess with that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with OSHA here because uh, I'm pretty sure OSHA would frown upon a creepy little doll going down stairs on a tricycle. So I think Jigsaw is going to trip himself up and he will uh, he will fall down the stairs off his tricycle and leave me an opening of which to escape. And even if I can't, I can at least kick the doll easier than I can. Uh, a grown ass Hannibal Lecter. So I think I'm going to go upstairs and I'm taking on Jigsaw. And you're taking on Hannibal Lecter? Mm hmm.
You're okay with him eating you with a with some fava beans and, so, and a nice Chianti? I mean, uh, you know, barring the scene from the the sequel Hannibal, uh, where he, uh, you know, unscrews Ray Liotta's head and eats a piece of his brain, um, you know, generally he kills you first. So I, I, at that point, I don't care if he eats me or not. I guess that's a solid point. I will say this, though. Ray Liotta didn't seem phased by it, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I'm still gonna go up against uh, Jigsaw though, because at least if I'm going up against Jigsaw, I don't have to worry about a you know some guy throwing in my face. <laughs> You're listening to the Treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. in the treehouse visit us online at treehouseonair.com today is monday october 28th 2024 it is time for birthdays birthdays inside the treehouse now nolan gould is 25 he is best and probably only known as luke dunphy on modern family so nolan gould 25 trey did you ever watch uh, modern family i've started to and um it's it's on my it's probably my next sitcom up Interesting. um for uh, catching up on uh, a lot of stuff that i i didn't watch when uh, uh my drinking days <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of shows you missed <laughs> i i did I missed, missed a lot and um so i uh wrapping up currently wrapping up the good place and i think modern family is probably gonna be next up I need to watch the good place. I've heard nothing but, of course, good things about it. Yeah, it's it's it, it's it's a good show, uh, and uh, easy watch because the seasons were remarkably short, like twelve like twelve episodes, and uh, I think it lasted four seasons. So there you go. That see, that's perfect. That's I'm a big fan of the streaming comedies now because they're not because like broadcast TV comedies, 20 to 24 episodes per season. That's really a lot to do. I'm still going through cheers and <laughs> you know, that's taken me over a year because we, we go away from it, come back and yeah. then we try to do that. So I love things like, uh, or and things that's like, a- it's like uh skits Creek. I don't want to say the other one. Yeah. Uh, um, is uh that's great as well because that's like 10 episodes per season i mean that's 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 really consumable i enjoy that and that's what because the good place was network so that, that's what what's surprising that it's uh that it's that short but yeah uh i think i think they should actually uh you know take a page out of the streamers playbook and actually go shorter season you know shorter seasons there's no reason to do 20 to 25 and water it down just do like you know 10 to 12 or maybe 15 just really really good ones um other birthdays today we've got finn whitrock that's a great name he is 39 today he is uh best known as dandy mott on ahs freak show another uh another finn the other finn is finn wolfhard from stranger things that's the main stranger things kid uh other birthdays today matt smith is 41 he was damon targaryen on house of the dragon before that he was the 11th doctor on doctor who uh speaking of house of the dragon gwendolyn christie is 45 she was brian of tarth on game of thrones which gave us house of the dragon i think right yeah yeah, yeah. uh and she was also captain phasma in the new star wars movies she was the one with the silver uh she was the silver stormtrooper you look so lost, Trey. I which Star Wars movie? The the new ones. Oh, she was like, the she was the Chrome Stormtrooper. The shiny. We're talking one. about like the the last three in the trilogy. Yeah, or? yeah. She only she only made it through the first two. Okay, I believe. Uh, and then other birthdays today. We've got Joaquin Phoenix, uh, whose Joker sequel did not do so Ooh. hot. He is fifty today. God, um, that got bashed. Here's and, an and, idea. I understand creative freedom and want to be wanting to be artistic and things, but let's not turn. Look, you just need to be careful when you take a comic book style film and you turn it into a musical. Not the best of ideas. Yeah, but it's a. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix obviously really talented. Lady mm-hmm. Gaga is actually really talented, uh, uh, both on screen and and obviously as a musician. So 
I was really surprised at how like and that just got panned by critics and fans. I mean, just as awful. Mm-hmm. And uh, someone also celebrating a birthday today that knows about awful films. That is Justin Guarini. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, 46 today. Uh, he was the one that lost American Idol. He was the uh, original American Idol runner, runner up, but he was in that movie with the winner, Kelly Clarkson, the movie from Justin to Kelly. <laughs> oh my I, am gosh. I am proud to say, Trey, that is a movie I have not seen. I am aware of its existence, but I have not seen it. Also, good for, good for you. Thank you. I have drawn the line somewhere. Uh, Julia Roberts is 56. Favorite Julia Roberts movie? Go. Oh, um, loved her in Hook. Uh, obviously, Pretty Woman. Um, and there's one I'm thinking. Oh, uh, Still Magnolias is always one of my favorite movies. Oh, that's a great one. Anytime you get the, the armadillo cake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know what's weird is uh, I, I've, I have this feeling, I had this thought about Julia Roberts, and I've always had it, and that is I think she is an absolutely beautiful woman. But mm. there is just no like physical attraction. Not that it matters because it's not like I'm ever, you know, going to be presented with that opportunity now or even ever before. Um, but she never really, you know, was like, ooh, sexy. You know what I mean? Um, and you would think pretty woman for that, right? Honestly, the film where I thought Julia Roberts was the quote unquote sexiest was in Hook when she played Tinkerbell. <laughs> no, that's what, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea why, but it is. Uh, she she is one of those that I always have thought was just gorgeous. Um, and I kind of get what you're saying, um, but there's something about her that I always uh, huge crush. I like to think she's somewhere doing a podcast, thinking about you know there's a there's two radio guys that uh, I've had my eyes on for a while. They just they're good looking. They just don't do it for me sexually. <laughs> <laughs> it's only fair. Uh, uh, Andy Richter is 58. Jamie Gertz is 59. And Trey, this is a birthday I know you're going to love. Daphne Zuniga is 61. A lot of people know her as Joe Reynolds on Melrose Place. But Trey, to you and me, she will and always will be Princess Vespa from Spaceballs. Yes. God, 61? Yeah. No, I'm sorry, 62. Daphne oh. Zuniga is 62 today. Oof. That just made me feel old. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what else made me feel old uh, uh, the other day? Was uh, when Zachary Ty Bryan, who was the older kid on Home Improvement, got arrested for his second DUI this year. That's not the part that made me feel old. What made me feel old is the fact that he's 42. Yeah. Yeah, quickly getting to that point. <laughs> I either don't know who the birthdays are, or then they just make me feel old. Yeah, whatever happened to the to the to the to the middle ground on those? Yeah. <laughs> Where those people were old and I still knew who all the younger birthdays were. Now uh -huh. we're just in this horrific limbo. Yeah. yeah well, yay, it, yay aging. Yeah. Well, I mean, Annie Potts is 72. Caitlyn Jenner. How do they keep track of this? So Bruce Jenner would have been 75 today. Is Caitlyn Jenner 75 or is Caitlyn Jenner more like 12 now? <laughs> you know what? Don't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. You're in the treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. Once again, do us a favor. Go to fairlease.org. Take a look at their inventory. See all the great uh, vehicles they've got that you can lease uh, to save time and money on that next new vehicle. Go to fairlease.org. That is fairlease.org. Earlier, we were talking about the infestation of the skies with Spirit Airlines. Um, and look, rodents running around the aircraft is certainly not something that you want to have happen. Um, but there's 
something else that happens around the airline industry that is not airline specific. This happens across the entire industry at every airport I've ever been, and it drives me up the freaking wall. And I didn't realize that one of my biggest pet peeves at airports has a name until now. Trey, are you gate lice? I'm sorry, what? Okay, you don't know what gate lice is. I didn't either until the other day. I'm going to tell you what gate lice is. And good news, American Airlines is cracking down on it. Before boarding, right? Before boarding, before you even get on the plane, we're talking about just when they start announcing what group numbers that it's time to start boarding, right? Mm -hmm. Boarding before it's your turn might become a thing of the past thanks to a new tool American Airlines is using during boarding at a number of airports. Under a new system, passengers who have their tickets scanned and try to enter the plane before their designated boarding group will set off an audible sound indicating their sneaky behavior. So not only do they get called out, they get singled out and then removed from the line and they have to wait their turn like the rest of us who learned about it properly in kindergarten. This action now has a name and it is gate lice. If you try to board the plane before it is your designated time, you are gate lice. And I had no idea that term existed. And look, I'm not a big fan of labels. Nowadays, it seems like everything has to have a specific name or a label or something. And I'm not big on it. But this is one I'm completely on board with because I hate the people that try to get on board the plane before it's their turn. Gate lice. That's what you are. I've never understood that. Now, Southwest Airlines, okay, because you're not assigned seats. Uh, I, I could at least understand it a little bit. But if you have assigned seating, I have never understood why people are in such a rush. It's like, it doesn't matter whether you're first or last. You're still, your seat's the same. Yeah. It, this ain't Talladega Nights. You are not Ricky Bobby. You do not need to be, you know, uh, first place with everything. Just You're all going to go to the same place, get on the damn plane, you're fine. I mean, now, what bothers me far more than gate lice are the a-holes that the minute you, you land and you get to the gate, like, they are standing up like it's a race to get off the plane. That's, uh, I don't know if those people have a term yet other than uh, uh, holes. Yeah. Um, because I've been in that situation before where I had a legit connecting flight, 20 minutes separating and people would, they ran to the front of the plane or ran in front and they wouldn't let me pass. They didn't care. Like, no, no, I'm going. Yeah. Uh, landing, so I don't, I don't, I, landing with a 20 minute schedule connection. I too have flown spirit airlines. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> I too have flown the Spirit <laughs> Once again, they only promise to get you there eventually. <laughs> not necessarily in one piece, and it's not necessarily without any rodents or being called lice. Yeah, the damn rat made his connection. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You know why? Because because he didn't get fooled in standing in line with everybody else. He went he went the other he went the road less traveled. <laughs> <laughs> I figured he paid a fee that I didn't know about. <laughs> Damn. I wish I had the option. Yeah. All right. <laughs> for all things Treehouse, go to treehouseonair.com and also give us a follow on social media. For the show, it's at Treehouse on Air. <laughs> For me, it's at the Dan O'Malley, and for Trey, it's at Trey Trend Home One. We will see you back here tomorrow inside the treehouse. See you.